Guys, it's getting dangerously close to race season, and as of now, my roster, it's not looking so hot. Doesn't run, definitely doesn't run. Also doesn't run. Old girl here, yep, you guessed it, not running. The engines for my project cars are pretty much just eye candy laying around the shop. But today, that all changes. I just wrapped up the last few odds and ends on the 1,000 horsepower LS9 for my ZR1. And of course, that means it's time to stick it in. Here we are. It's the first time this car has been in the air in over a year, I guess, at this point. This was definitely one of those builds that was not supposed to turn into a thing. And if it's not obvious, this has definitely turned into a thing. It does hurt just a little bit to see the condition of the car at this point. Some of the damage like that has been here all along, and some things like this very rusty power steering pump are here just because the car sat so long. In case you happen to be new to the channel, here's the quick backstory on this car. I took it apart about a year ago, planning to do a head cam 2650 build. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for us. We ended up needing a short block and it set us back over a year due to part shortages. But we've all heard the saying, good things come to those who wait. And in this case, what came to us was this fully built late model engines LS9. Today's goal, get this engine along with the rest of the drivetrain back up into this car. And maybe, just maybe, she'll end up being something more than a parking lot ornament. I honestly don't know what looks worse, the transmission or the car. That's a little more complicated to clean. This one we can just hit with the pressure washer. Why does it actually have so much oil on it? I mean, as per usual around this place, I bought the worst, cheapest, highest mileage example I could find. I think this car has like 120,000 miles on it. Look at that Dude, difference. This thing is disgusting. Wow. May have been a good idea to just do this a year ago, but anyway. Ten times better. Fernando. <laughs> really? Fernando, can you go grab the shaft? The what? It's a turkey. It's a shaft. Put it in the cone. It's, it's a shaft it's inside a of a tube. It's no. technically a shaft. Yes. So anyway, we have all the parts we need here. I suppose now we just have to bolt them all together and stick them on in. As you guys might imagine, we can't just toss it in without doing the proper prep work. This filthy hunk of metal right here is our original slave cylinder. It's lived a long and very fulfilling life, but it has definitely seen better days. Of course, we're going with the only logical solution here, replacing it with a younger and much better looking counterpart. As you guys might imagine, we're not going to leave it alone. We have to modify it just a little bit. It just so happens that this is one of the most important mods you can do to a Corvette. If you guys learn anything from this video, make it this. Making sure there's no interference between your clutch and slave cylinder, absolutely critical. I'm not going to show you guys the entire process. It would be one of the most boring things you've seen on the channel, second to only a certain 1.2 liter Nissan, but it goes something like this. You measure here with the slave cylinder completely depressed. You measure from the edge of the engine block to the fingers of the clutch tip, accounting for any offset right there. You slap all the numbers in right there, make sure that one isn't negative, and then you're good to go. Realistically, there is more to it than that. On certain clutches, they'll use shims like this to shim the slave cylinder outwards. Pick it up, you slide it in. Sound good? Oh, smooth. It's teamwork. Now it's gonna go right onto a couple alignment dowels in that center shaft. Woo! Looking good. It's impressive that you can put a thousand horsepower on this thing. I do feel like you just jinxed me. So when this thing goes boom at the track, you're paying for it, all right? You are reimbursing me. He says you're one. Nothing's gonna, look. She ain't going nowhere. Oh, we're, we're, we're fucked. He just screwed everything up. <laughs> Don't scratch it. Don't even start. I'm just making sure that you take that in consideration, you know? Why would I want to scratch this beautiful supercharger? Uh, oh. gotta give it to LME. This is one of the coolest things that came with the engine. To the best of my knowledge, I wasn't charged for it either. Fernando, you're in charge of finding another cool engine to put this on. Alright. Now we're leveling out a little bit. Come on, baby. 
This is always kind of a pain. This is never a pleasant experience. Very important guys, if you choose to do this, do it very, very carefully. You're really not supposed to be doing this. These dowels have acquired a significant amount of rust over the past, I don't know, 14 months. Yeah, it was 100% those dowels. The minute it slipped over that, everything just loosened up and started sliding in. Once again, if you choose to ignore common knowledge like me, make sure you're very careful about doing it. Quarter inch ratchet, any resistance, stop. But on this occasion, ignoring good sense worked out for us. team i believe we're about there i decided to start with the rear for no good reason it was just a couple subframe bolts a couple control arm bolts the shocks and we should be ready to pop her on out give her the old shake test to make sure we don't end up in that kind of youtube video but there we are it's filthy it's disgusting but most importantly it's all there I may or may not have, but definitely did. I already say that this is disgusting, but I mean it. It is filthy, nasty. Presumably because of that transmission leak that had the trans so dirty, this whole area back here had a nice coating of oil on it. And then after it sat, all the dust from sitting just stuck to it. Check it out. Is it perfect? No, but it looks 10 times better. When we inevitably grenade the differential in this thing somewhere down the line, maybe we'll take it a little more serious. But for now, we have bigger fish to fry. Now, if you already have a car that has carbon ceramic brakes, you probably already know this, but in case you don't, here's a little knowledge for you. Never let these hit the ground. Don't hit them with a wheel, anything. The minute you hit this, it cracks, it's no good, very expensive to replace. So always treat them with the utmost care. The reason we have this thing placed so gently up here on the forklift is before we snake it under the transmission, which will probably be even more sketchy, we gotta stick these fancy new Torque Solutions transmission mounts in. Beautiful new mounts that are going to keep our transmission and diff in one place. 120,000 mile used stock mounts. Absolutely no bueno. You can see they're dry rotted. They're cracking. They're overall just soft and nasty at this point. These guys are kind of an interesting design. Even when you tighten that bolt down, they still float around like that. You ready to get even more sketchy? Yes. Oh, I didn't expect that answer. I was ready for you to say no and I was going to start arguing with you. Okay, let's harness up out of the way so we don't sit the subframe down on it and mess something else up on this car. Are a few ways Chevy recommends to do this. As you can imagine, this is not one. I don't know who said this was sketchy. That worked flawlessly. This is far and away as close as this has looked to a full drivetrain in, well, a very long time. The only difficult part here is remembering how all this stuff goes because I genuinely cannot. It's not the worst thing in the world though. It's just like one big giant puzzle. We follow the wires and try to figure out where the connectors go. And as long as they plug in like that, we're on the right track. Boom, easy. Pin in there, done. That leaves these two guys here for what I believe are the chassis connectors. I think we just nailed it. This big plastic section runs all the way up the torque tube. Best I can tell, we're pretty golden back here. We do have a couple more things to address, fluids, some other lines. We'll worry about that after we do the same thing all again on the front.
course, hindsight's 2020. but when I thought this car was only gonna be down for, say, two weeks, I went ahead and threw this engine harness in the engine bay, thinking it wouldn't have time to get dirty and all nasty. Obviously, that did not work out. Do you by any chance remember when I went and ordered all those new sensors for the supercharger? Yes. Because I was sure I lost them. Yeah, it turns out they were just stuck in the engine harness. One other problem we have here, this power steering pump. I showed you guys earlier, this pulley got rusty. I'm hoping that cleans up when we use the car, but for now, it looks terrible and I feel awful about it. Just like the rear of the car, we have ourselves a fancy new set of engine mounts as well. So back to the old forklift. Even worse than the actual transmission mounts. These guys sitting up there by those headers, they are just nasty. That is not good looking. I suppose we have time for one more ZR1 fun fact right here. This front subframe looks like aluminum. It's magnesium. Good news is it's very, very light, significantly lighter than the ones in the base cars. Bad news is if you wreck your car, you need one of these. These have an alignment pin in them, so I can only imagine that they're meant to go about like that. Whew. That was tough. Now for the hard part. I don't know what this is. It's not supposed to be a cape, but if it works as a cape, you wear it as a cape. Keep going. Roughly, I'd say 10 minutes ago, I thought we were ready to sit this engine down on here and be on our merry way. But as we get more into it, as we slap these on, it's kind of all coming back to me now. I forgot there's quite a bit more going on over here and a little bit on the other side too that we have to do before we can actually put it on the subframe. As you can imagine, because I forgot we had to put this on, I also forgot to order a gasket for it. Fortunately, we got lucky and there's one coming from up the street right now. I don't know how I didn't catch this when we took the car apart and have one of these lines on standby, but it looks like at some point, I don't know what did it, but this forward coolant hose got melted there. And I can assure you, we don't have one of these. We're back on. About a year ago, we got an LS7 car in here, a 2013 C6 Z06. It was blown up and it was blown up bad. Fortunately, we kept the engine around because maybe I'll swap it into something one day, which suggestions, comments. Fortunately, I just so happen to have the oil cooler laying around, which does have the one single hose that we need. Boom, there we go. This car had like 3,500 miles on or something ridiculously low. Can't get newer than that. Well, other than buying new, but. These next couple things I probably could wait to do, but I'll figure while we have the engine here on the forklift, we might as well just make our lives a little bit easier and knock it out. There is a ton more that go to these. They run all the way to the back of the car, but we can worry about those in just a bit. Now, assuming you guys have been following some of the earlier episodes of this build, which if you haven't, I mean, come on, why not? You guys have already seen these monsters. American Racing two inch headers, ceramic coated by Jet Hot, the best of the best. To make our lives a little bit easier here, we're gonna go ahead and install them before we put it in the car. Look at the difference on that. ARP. Cool. That's what you're supposed to do. It does look good. Shout out Alex on that one. He had a set of these laying around. He doesn't need them yet. What a nice guy. Swell fellow. New heads, they shouldn't need chased or anything like that. So you might be wondering how we got here. One of these new bolts that I now think may have been a sabotage, just locked, threaded in my hand and then just stopped. I have no clue what happened. No clue. Everything else threaded in clean. Uh, I went to turn it back out. It was very, very bad. I debated even showing you guys this because there's no way to put a good spin on this. It's not going to be exciting. It's not going to be fun to watch and it's not going to be pleasant. But you guys know I try to show you the bad as well as the good. Well, here's the really f***ing bad. Call me opportunistic or, uh, you know, an extortionist might be the other word here. But if I'm going to do this for you, you're going to have to agree to never use the phrase I hate Nissan Jukes for comment purposes ever again. If you get this out while I sit here and watch, 
I hate Nissan Jukes for comment purposes is done. See, that is what I am about to lay down dimes. We do have to play a little game. You're gonna watch what's about to happen and then you let me know if you think he loved that car. So here is where we stand. It's not out, and it might look like it's going pretty badly, but I'm actually cautiously optimistic. We've been drilling for, I don't know, an hour. Stainless steel is obviously not very easy to drill through. I've worked my way through four drill bits. At that point, I thought we were making a little progress, and then, of course, disaster struck. Here is drill bit number five. Yep, that's right, it broke off in the bolt. If you've ever had the misfortune of doing something like this, when the drill bit breaks off, it's usually done. It's game over. It's just not meant to happen. Don't ask me how. I don't believe I've got this lucky before, but I was able to jam this on the wrong side of it, the right-hand side. After some persuasion, slowly but surely, it spun it out. So at that point, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like we're destined to get it out now. I hit the hardware store. I got some actual cobalt drill bits. In case we are successful, I got ourselves a helicoil kit. At this point, it can still go either way. I've been at it for about three hours now, and the only thing left to do at this point is to get back to drilling. That does not feel good. If in your life you can at all avoid ever having to drill through a stainless steel bolt, I highly recommend it. They do make kits to assist in this that guarantee that this is going to be a perfectly straight drill. Obviously, as you guys saw last night, I did not have one. In the past, I've been super lucky. Even working on high mileage engines, iron blocks, I've never had one of those break. Well guys, we did have to go up a size with the bolt, but it looks like after all, we have it sorted out. Obviously to have to do something like this on a brand new engine, it sucks. There's no two ways about it. I really don't love the fact that my new engine has a repaired cylinder head. I started going around and threading in header bolts. This one here, absolute trash. On the other side, we're good all the way up until we get to this last one here. Threads in, maybe two threads. That's all we got. There's no more tightening that by hand. I can't imagine this is gonna be pretty when it comes out. That's wild, definitely not what I expected on a new set of cylinder heads. For obvious reasons, I am gonna go clean up every single one of these holes, but after that, it's time to get right back to it and get these headers on. The way I see it, this is just gonna make it all the sweeter when we crack off that first eight second pass. This has been an absolute nightmare, but I believe we're back on track. I am the biggest matching bolt proponent out there. I will search for 30 minutes for two matching bolts before I use mismatched bolts. So as you might imagine, this is not ideal for me. I know you guys are sick of seeing headers. I'm sick of talking about headers, so let's go bust out something that's even more fun. Now that we've at least hopefully got all the negative out of this video, it's time to move on to something I've been excited for for a very long time. As time has went on, I have got significantly more accepting of the fact that I don't need this to be a street car. So when it came time to pick an exhaust, I went with the lightest possible option. It just so happens that uh, the lightest possible option means it doesn't have mufflers. You've seen us use Holly products over and over and over on this channel. It turns out one of their brands, Hooker, makes the perfect exhaust for what I wanna do with this car. There's a ton of Corvette exhaust options out there. Most of them are fairly expensive. The good thing about the fact that these are pretty much straight pipes with a set of nice tips on them, they're cheap. Most of you guys know I've had a lot of C6 exhaust, and I mean a ton. One thing I find cool about this one is this little brace, is this little brace in the back. There are some brand of aftermarket mufflers that kind of flop around a lot. Don't think that's going to be a problem here. And as is the case with any new part you order, the most important piece in the part that makes me want to keep coming back, free stickers. When you're done, that's about what it'll look like right there. Two pipes just laid over it very, very loosely. Now, Fernando, I think it's about that time. You ready to throw this in there? Go.
section of the steering shaft that I did forget. I think we're officially in. I'd be lying if I told you guys these past two days have went smoothly. There's been ups, there's been downs, and yeah, I mean big downs. But as we stand right now, everything looks pretty good. It's been a really long time coming, as Fernando reminds me on a constant basis, but now we finally have a drivetrain in the ZR1. And I'm having trouble remembering the official count, but I believe it was one broken stainless header bolt, three smashing my head into a lift. Everything aside though, we've made great progress, but we're not done yet. There are a few more things that I wanna to handle today. Now I know putting this car back together, there have seemingly been a lot of things that have been my least favorite part. Well, this is my next least favorite part. It does seem like luck's been on our side today, however, so I'm gonna assume it's gonna continue. 38, 39, 40. Now we go fishing for a wire in there. I believe it is that one. There we are, there's the old wire. I, I don't know exactly what this wire is for, but it's the one all the ED5 kits use to get the ethanol content into the ECU. We replace it with this wire here, unravel this. This goes all the way to the other side of the engine. Then we connect it to this guy here, boom, corn fuel. There we go. I made the absolutely just horrendous mistake on my first ZR1 of trying to do this with the fender on the car because it was so low mileage and I didn't want to ruin the panel gaps. Never again. Doesn't this just feel weird at this point? Why, that everything is going smooth? No, smooth? <laughs> Come on. You know this is not what's smooth. But the fact that it's actually just going back together, it's not looking at this thing in the parking lot, not ordering parts, it's okay, we're plugging the ECU in, it's done, oil tank connector, done. Let's do the fender on. I know we're not actually finishing this exhaust today, but I couldn't help myself to just get these lined up, get them in the hangers, because they look awesome. I can't believe this is how they come from factory. I know, I know. So I've been waiting to talk to you guys about this. And if you've not messed with the Corvette before, this is probably kind of shocking, but from the factory, from Chevrolet, you have washers on the car that go behind the control arms. They're basically shims. What I'm getting at here is if someone like me built a car in my garage, it'd probably look a lot like a Corvette. And I mean that in the best way possible. I love it. That's my little trick for stopping the car with ceramics hitting the ground when the car is on a cart. There is a high likelihood that these washers will hit the ground. Please don't laugh when it happens. That is 110% the first time I've ever stuck a front upper control arm on a Corvette without dropping the washers. How many times did I drop the washers on the other side? Probably 20. Well, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but it was a few. That actually went better than expected, which I can definitely use today. So now I guess it's time to bust out these fancy new calipers. Boom. Surprise, they're the same calipers. Same calipers, sort of. If you look at the backside of them, silver, blue. You guys might recognize this one's been machined down just a little bit. That's because these are some big brakes. These ones, you can't clear a 17 inch wheel. You gotta run an 18, these guys here, 19 inch. I have no issues with those roll racing, but at the drag strip, trying to do stuff from a dig, think you need a 17. You really don't take off that much, but you can see it just looks like a thinner profile. You guys usually know by now, after we install a party, you step back, man, it looks awesome, because I'm usually pretty hyped about what we installed. This looks the same, so I'm not gonna say anything. One thing I will say though, last episode, I slapped these wheels on and said, I didn't know if it needed spacers. It needs spacers. It needs it badly. It sits really high in the front. Way too high. I don't know what happened here. I guess we are still missing a good 200 some pounds out of the front, so there's a lot to do up there. I won't stress about it yet. Otherwise, it looks amazing. Engine's finally in, and there's one thing I've been wanting to do for a very long time. It's 
It's been a year. Finally get to look through this stupid little clear piece in the middle of my hood and actually see something. I suppose since you have worked your way over here, it's time to bust out what is undoubtedly the best part of this entire video. I do want to take a quick second to thank Dalt for lending his expertise for multiple hours last night, giving it his best shot to help me get that stupid stud out. Unfortunately, he didn't get the job done. And if you remember what he said... You're going to have to agree to never use the phrase, I hate Nissan Jukes for comment purposes ever again. Didn't work out for you, did it? So in honor of that, in honor of a very successful day today, and I guess for the past week at this point, go down in the comments just for fun, drop an I hate Nissan jukes. We got to install a bunch of killer parts this episode, especially that exhaust. Cannot wait to hear that. It's not sitting right, but once we get that X-Plate, once we take care of everything else under the car, it's going to look flawless. As per usual, we'll be back in here ASAP and hope to see you guys again soon for another video. Adios. As of right now, my engines are pretty much just eye candy like damn it, dude. I can't fing get all these in the video. It's not gonna work. Right the other, yeah, the other one's right there. Okay. But yeah, I mean it's, it's obviously missing, so this car's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I really f this as thing you, off the nut. As you're shitting on your motor. <laughs> my man. He's like, you're out you here. Get up. Up. You are sucking tonight. Here, have a bubbly. Sponsor us, bubbly. <laughs> You can never let these things hit the... About a year from now, we're gonna be doing an LS7 build on the channel, and they're gonna hear me complaining and bitching that I'm missing this hose, but... What? He looks like he's about to go scrap him. He looks like a d junkie. He's gonna steal your catalytic converter or stainless bolts, take him to the scrapyard. <laughs> is, is this throttle body aluminum? <laughs>